Crossroads of Albuquerque presents Pastor Tom Wednesday nights titled The Secret Place All right 1 Corinthians chapter 3 uh, verses 16 and 17 we want to talk tonight about the secret place. And, uh, and I, I believe that we're going to see some things here in the scripture that are going to just encourage us and help us grow closer in that respect. So 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. It says, Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells within you? If anyone defiles the temple, God will destroy him, for the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Father, we thank you that you're about to give us the insight that we need in this scripture to help us become that place that, that you want us to, to have in our life, Lord, and help us understand the wording of your word, Lord Jesus, as it speaks to us, that there's a secret place that we can go into, and that's where your presence is. And Lord, we give you glory for that in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, when I uh, first started looking at this whole thought, my, my first beginning plat passage was found in Ezekiel. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit. But it wasn't as positive as this is. I mean, you know, it was a little bit more God, uh, what do you say, he was rebuking the people of Israel because they have allowed the temple to, to be defiled. And, uh, you know, it's a secret place. It's a hiding place. It's a place of refuge. You know, sometimes we forget where God is. And, and we think we can just put him off to the side over here. And we don't need you, God, until a crisis comes. Because, you know, a lot of people turn to God in crisis. Yeah. You know, they wait till things go bad and things fall apart and, and dilemmas come and, you know, and then, but you know, we as believers, once we know who God is in our life and we are walking in that fellowship, we don't have to wait for a crisis to come to call upon his name and declare who he is because we already know. Isn't that the joy of being a Christian? That we can face every day, tomorrow, knowing that Jesus Christ is right there by our side. And as I was looking at the passage of Scripture concerning the hiding place and the sheltering and uh, where God is in that, in that dwelling area, uh, this Scripture came to mind in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Know ye not that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, and God's Spirit dwells within you. And as we look at the Scripture, we'll see how that unfolds according to what the Old Testament said. But I want us to just be really have an idea uh, in our heart, that there is a place in us that God dwells. The Spirit of Christ dwells within us. We have been quickened from the dead by the Spirit of God in us. Well, you know, we sing the songs of worship. We, we lift our voice, our hands, and we, we feel the, the presence of God. And where does it center in? It just centers inside of us. God's presence is inside of us. And dwelling inside of us. And don't you know you're the temple in which God dwells in? Right. It's not a temple like brick and mortar. No. It's not a temple like the Old Testament where they had all these stones and now for sacrifices and, and everything. The sacrifice has already been laid and paid. And that person is Jesus Christ. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Living and dwelling inside of you is His presence. I'm recalled of a scripture when Solomon dedicated the temple and he gave a great prayer and he called out to the Lord and as he was praying that prayer the Bible says that the presence of God came like a cloud and settled or rested upon them and they could not stand to minister. God's presence filled that tabernacle. As we yield ourselves to be that vessel that God feels. His presence comes in like the cloud. Maybe we can't see it, but he comes in just like that cloud did in this temp Solomon's temple, and it filled the place. And you can't stand to minister. You don't know what, how to say things. You just don't know how to respond. All you know is that God is in you. And we need to be rejoicing in that fact as a believer. It is important to have a special place with God. All of us know that. I'm just going to tell you again. Pete and repeat. 
You know, it's good for your memory. It's good for us to know that there is a special place that God wants us to enter into, a special time, a special awareness of where He is. It's important to have that place. It is entering into His presence because of our, because, and, and as we enter His presence, He becomes our covering. I want you to turn with me to the book of the Psalms, Psalm 27. And I want you to look at a passage here, and we'll look at verse, chapter 31 as well. But Psalm 27, verse 5. Uh, I, 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 I don't know, as a kid, I guess we all had places that we all ran to when we needed, when we, we had a safe place. You know, our parents didn't know about it. You know, it was just a place that we knew that we're in trouble. We run to it, and we can just rest. We can hide. We can, you know, think about what's going to happen when we get home or know that we're, we're safe from trouble. And in Psalm uh, 27, it says this in verse 5. It says, For in a time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. There's that secret place. There's that covering. Because when you look at a pavilion today, you see, you know, you see them in the backyards of houses. You know, the pavilion, they have the decking, they have all that. And when a storm comes, you can run underneath it and you'll be dry. It's a place of fellowship. It's a place of, uh, of just security. And so we find that in a time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret place of his tabernacle. He shall hide me. Hide me, knowing not that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit and that God's Spirit dwells within you. There are times where you might want to just come into this place. We call it a sanctuary, a temple, or a tabernacle, a church building. I just call it a place where I can just rest in God. You know, I was here this afternoon and I would just going over his notes, and I say, Lord, I just need help today. I just need to put this, Lord, I just, you know, it's just like a peace that comes and rests when you know that God is present when you call upon him. And you don't have to be in the sanctuary or this place here to experience that, but it's available. I mean, it's a nice place to come, you know, nice padded pews, you know, quiet. But you can be at home, you can be in your car, you can be at the workplace, where you, all of a sudden you can just knock out everything and just, God, it's just you and Him. Amen. And that's a quiet place. He hides you in that tabernacle or that hiding place. And I don't know about you, I think all of us face difficulty throughout the course of a day. We all have circumstances. We all have issues. We all have diverse things that come against us in various forms. And sometimes they just agitate us. And we need a place to run to. And that's what that secret place is all about, is finding that place where His presence is, where He dwells, and secure yourself. in. If you have to go into the restroom and lock the door, do it. You know, and, that, and make that your little sanctuary for whatever moment that you have and say, Lord, I need to come to your presence. I need to just cool down or just get myself together. I need some direction or wisdom. And let him minister to you Amen. because he is your father and he is your Lord. He is your savior. He is your king. And he wants to give you what you need to make it through that situation. Right. Turn with me now to the, the chapter 31. Look at verse 20. It's going to basically say the same thing in some respect, but let's look at it. It says, uh, Psalm 31, verse 20, it says, You shall hide them in the secret place of your presence. Have you noticed that both times it says secret place of his presence? There's a, there is something about being in the presence of God. In the Old Testament, the ark represented the presence of God in the tabernacle. But guess what happened when Jesus said it was finished? In Matthew, uh, we find that the, the, the temple curtain was split from top to bottom and man had access into the presence of God from that day forward. And God dwells within you now. He wants to hide you in, him, in His presence. So there's an open door to go where He is and to find out, just to come in it without, without having a priest. 
without having a preacher. You individually can go into the presence of God. You don't have to do any kind of form or ritual. You don't have to do certain steps to get there. <laughs> All you have to do is fall and say, Lord, here I am. Amen. Here I am. And let Him just minister to your need. He says, you hide them in a secret place. From the plots of men you shall keep them secretly in a pavilion from the tongue, from the strife of tongues. And I believe this is in some way a spiritual picture that God wants us to see that when the enemy comes against you, God puts up a standard and He protects you. When people are saying things or doing things against you, God just blocks it out and you don't even notice it. You just know that God's got you in the palm of His hand. He takes care of you. You go every day. And when the enemy is still throwing things at you, you're just walking along trusting God because He's got a hedge around you. And it secures you. The Bible says this in Isaiah 54, 17. If no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And the tongue that rises up against you shall be brought down in judgment. Amen. Hallelujah. So God hides us in that secret place. Uh, the secret place is also a hiding place. I like hiding. <laughs> Again, going back to that place where we're trying to get away from things. Turn with me to the Psalm 32, verse 7. It's just right down the page there. And it says this, You are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall surround me with songs of deliverance. Oh, here's the picture of this event found in Daniel chapter 3, where Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego have been bound and cast into the fire. Normally they would have died. But if you, see, if you remember the account there, that Nebuchadnezzar saw them walking around, hands lifted up, giving praise to God. And there was also a fourth man there who looked like the Son of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And so we see that in the midst of their burning, fiery trial, they weren't running and moaning and complaining and murmuring. No, they were rejoicing in the presence of the Lord. And when it says songs of deliverance, you've got a song to sing. You know, in every situation, there is a song to sing, a song of praise. We heard the, the, the proclamation through the Spirit to, the, to give praise and honor to the Lord because He's there in the midst of us when we gather in His name. How much more so when we're in the midst of trial? Is He there present with us? Let's rejoice in Him. Hallelujah. In Psalm 22, verse 3, it gives the indication that God dwells or inhabits the praises of His people. That's my translation, but that's, it says that to the, about the people of Zion. But God loves to be among those who praise Him and worship Him. When you know you're secure, when you know you're in that hiding place, and you know that you're in fellowship with the Lord, just lift the praises. Just lift the hearts of, glory, uh, of song before Him. Jesus said... In this to the Pharisees, he said this to them when they were saying, Quiet your disciples because they're making so much racket about who you are. And Jesus said, If I tell them to be quiet, the rocks themselves will cry out in praise. Hallelujah. I'm not going to let no rock take my praise. Right. God gave me a voice. God right. gave me some lungs. Right. We need to praise Him. Praise him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, He is, always. He is always worthy. Turn with me to Psalm 91, verse 1. Again, talking about the covering or the sheltering that God provides in that secret place. Psalm 91, verse 1 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Just under his care. No fear. No, no, no disaster coming your way because when he hides you, he takes care of you. Every, every time I think about this scripture, I think about a little story that someone told years ago. And it's about a, a, a farm that lived out in the prairie. And, and you probably heard something very similar to this. And it's probably the same story just told over and over in different ways. But 
there was a fire that raced across the prairie, came across, across came to this farm, and in and this everybody with all the farmers trying to get all the animals out to safety and into a place where they could be protected. And after the far at the fire went through, the farmer was going back to find out what all the damage was, and then he saw one of his hens there in the field, and she had her wings out, and he was, oh, why does she have her wings out? Or look at how she's just all destroyed. But under her wings were her chicks, and they were safe, and they were secure. And they came out just, you know, like they do, chirping. You know, that's how God is with us. In the midst of our adversity, He covers us with His wings, and He protects us. Hallelujah. Turn with me now to uh, Psalm 61, verse 3. These are all scriptures just trying to encourage us that He is our shelter. He is our hiding place. He's a place of refuge, and we can run to Him at any time and know that He has a place for us. And we call that the secret place. The secret place. Psalm 61, verse 3. For you have been a shelter for me, a strong tower from the enemy. You have been a shelter for me. There's that covering. There's that secret place. God is still your shelter. God is still your covering. God is still protecting you. And he is keeping you from the enemy. Hallelujah. Satan may roar like a lion. And he may try to put fear in your heart. For greater is he who is in you than he who is in this world. Right. And if God be for you, who can be against you? Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Psalm 121, verse 5. 121, verse 5. The scripture says this. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your keeper. I saw highlights of the U.S. team against uh, Belgium yeah. uh, in a World Soccer match, World Cup soccer match. The Goldie is called the keeper. Our Goldie incredibly made 16 saves, new record for the World Cup soccer. He kept, he kept, he knocked it away. He kept the, the net safe. God is your keeper. He keeps you safe. Where when the attack comes, he blocks every attack. Hallelujah. Because he's your goalkeeper. You're behind him and he takes care of you. He is your keeper. And he wins, yes. The United States didn't win, but God will always win. Hallelujah. But he is our keeper, and that's what I want you to understand. He is your keeper. And he is going to keep you and protect you from anything that comes against you. Hallelujah. But our enemy, real quickly, let me share this with you. Our enemy is a sly old fox. I think we had a children's song that did something to this. The devil is a sly old fox. I don't know. Yeah, yeah I, I can't know the words, but I know that he is the, the one who is out to do one thing in our, against us, and that is to destroy our life. And he'll do whatever he can to come in and to hinder and to upset us and to disrupt our life in the peace of, from the peace of God. He'll want to take it away from us. And this is the scripture that got me started found in Ezekiel chapter 7. Ezekiel chapter 7. I just want you to just see it with me. It says, I turned my face from them. This is verse 22 of Ezekiel 7. Ezekiel 7, 22. I will turn my face from them and they will defile my secret place. And that caught, that's what caught my idea about the secret place. I don't want the enemy to come in and defile my secret place right. where the presence of God dwells in. And I believe it was last week we talked about little foxes. I don't want little foxes 
little things to come in and defile my place, my hiding place that I have alone with God. I don't want nothing to come between God and me. I don't want any uh, sin or attitude. Yes, attitude. Do you know that's worse than sometimes a sin? Because your heart is not right. Your motive is not right. And that is bad attitude. And, do, and let me tell you something. God knows how to deal with a bad dog attitude. Takes us to the woodshed. Yes, he does. And then some. But he does take care of us. But he, that's how. But he, the enemy, wants to come in and defile the sanctuary. You know, and we read the scripture in John ten ten. And we say, we say the last part of that verse really good, you know. I come that you might have life and that life more abundantly. But the scripture before that, the first part of that scripture is, but the thief comes but to steal, to kill, and destroy. Who's the thief? Well, the one that wants to defile your temple. And he wants to steal everything that God has provided for you to have in order that you may worship the Lord God in spirit and truth. He wants to upset and dis disrupt your relationship with God. It goes on to say, For robbers shall enter and defile it. I don't, want to, I don't want no one or anything to come in and rob what God has given me. I want to go to the enemy's camp and take back what the enemy stole. You know, that's a song we sing occasionally. We haven't sang it in a long time, but it's a song we have sung before. And uh, take back what the enemy has stolen. But as I was looking at this passage of Scripture in Ezekiel chapter 7, a verse caught my attention, verses 10 and 11. Turn with me, just look back over to 10 and 11 of the same chapter of Ezekiel. And it says this, Behold the day, behold that it is come. Doom has gone out, the rod has blossomed. Pride has budded. Violence has risen up into the rod of wickedness. Here's some things that the enemy is going to try to destroy. It's a physical, emotional, and spiritual onslaught. It is, you know, there are things that you're not going to see the enemy trying to do it. He's just going to, it's a, some things that he does is up here in your head. There's the, that's where your war wages, right there. Sometimes it's in the internal, that spiritual battle. And Paul spoke about that quite a bit too. Mm -hmm. But there are also times where you have an outward manifestation of a struggle and a battle. However the enemy comes against you, he, he, he is after one purpose, and that is to fill your life with these three things. And I found them here. It's the uh, wickedness and violence and pride. One word says it all. Sin nature. He's trying to destroy your life with that sin nature. But we who come to Christ have forsaken the sin nature. We've taken on a new nature which is filled with divine and precious promises of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we're being changed from glory to glory to glory. Every day you look better and better and better. I've been in this church a long time. Some of you have been as long with me, as, been here as long as I have. Some of you not as long. And I don't know about you, but I hope you've seen some changes in my life that have been better and better and better. Because I can tell you one thing. I can look out here and I can, I can point and I can say, your life is a thousand times better today than it was five or six years ago. Because I know, because I've seen the growth of God transforming your life, taking you from that darkness and bringing you into His marvelous light, changing that old sinful nature into a divine nature that is trusting and walking in the promises of God. That's what God does. But you know He's taking you into that secret place time and time again where you can hide, where you can gather strength. We need to protect our secret place. How do we do it? Well, let's turn to Psalm 17 real quickly. I got three passages of scripture real quick. 
in uh, Psalm 17, verse 4, 5, and 8. Psalm 17, verse 4, 5, and 8. Concerning the works of men, by the word of your lips, I have kept away from the path of the destroyer. You know, you know, if you're walking down the wrong path, you know when you are. You know what path you're walking on. But God keeps us from the path of the destroyer. His word I have hid in my heart that I may not sin against God. Amen. His word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So we know the word of God. He says, I've kept your word by the word of your lips. By the word that he's given us. Mm -hmm. He's kept us from the path of the destroyer. In verse 5, uphold my steps in your paths, that my footsteps may not slip. In other words, God, take my hand. Precious Lord, yes. take my hand. Yes. Lead me on, let me stand. I'm weak, I'm weary, I'm worn. God takes us every step of the way. Look again in that same verse, that same chapter, verse 8. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under, where? The shadow of your wings. Whoa. Lord, I want to rest where I know it's secure. Yeah. Under the shadow of your wings. And in Psalm 15, we see five verses here. And I, as, I, as I was reading them, I said, man, this is a sermon in itself. So I underlined the whole five verses. And we'll just read it. But we'll let God speak to you through that through the verses here. In Psalm 15, verse 1, it says, Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Who may dwell in your holy hill? Or we can say, Lord, who can hide in your secret place? Who can be in your presence? He gives the answer. He who walks uprightly and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart, who does not bat backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend, in whose eyes a vile person is despised, but he honors those who fear the Lord. He who swears to his own hurt and does not change. He who does not put out his money as usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved that's where you keep yourself safe right there by doing what exact these five verses give us a, a a a practical application to things in life and if we'll ask god to show us how to work that in our life he keeps us he shelters us he provides for us psalm 84 verse 11 this is dr parton's favorite verse and it's become one of mine as well Psalm 84, verse 11. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. How does he protect us? Our secret place? God is our sun and our shield. Hallelujah. God is everything to us, isn't he? Man. So find that secret place. Shh. Cherish it. Build it up. Make it a restful place where you know this is where I need to be when trouble comes, when heartaches come, when situations come beyond your control. Know this, that you can run to that, that place that you have with God and you can be in His presence immediately and the answer will be on its way. Thank you for joining us here at Crossroads. 